It's not the suffering that brings the clarity. It wasn't your dark night of soul that brought the clarity. All the dark night of soul did for you was allow you to experience so much pain. You had no choice but to open up and allow something, you know, some light to enter the situation. The more conscious and aware you are, the more purposeful you are about doing this, um, the more conscious you'll be of the changes that occur. But sometimes we just do it naturally. It's just, it just happens. Like the Course says, you know, you can't hold the light down forever and you can't even hold it down for a lifetime. It pops up, right? You just sub subconsciously, you receive the guidance and you make a move. You don't know why you did it. You know, you get an idea, you follow it. It's coming from the light. It's not coming out of fear. And, you know, miracles occur as a result. That happens to us all. You can't live a life and not have it happen. We, the ego may immediately try to, you know, like a dog, pick up a bunch of dirt and cover over the experience so you don't remember it, you don't put too much attention on it. Um, but we all have these experiences. You know, no one of us is any better or greater than the other. You know, some are more conscious and aware of what's happening. And if you are, then you naturally be, become a teacher of God, right? You naturally will be able to show other people how to do that just through your doing it. So that's back to the thing we talked about on Wednesday. There are two ways to learn. You can learn through pain and suffering. You can learn about love through pain and suffering, or you can learn about it through love. It's not the suffering that brings the clarity. It wasn't your dark night of soul that brought the clarity. All the dark night of soul did for you was allow you to experience so much pain you had no choice but to open up and allow something, you know, some light to enter the situation. So the Course says it's it's actually kindness and love that you can only get so far away from God before experiencing so much pain, you have to turn back around and come back to God. And so that's that's a kind and loving thing. If If there was no pain when you separate and get really far away from Source, you would keep going. There'd be no turning back. I just want to reiterate and remind everyone that each and every one here is you. Each and every one here represents some aspect of you and how you interpret them and judge them and feel about them is how you interpret, judge and feel about yourself. So if any frustration arises or any annoyance arises, pay attention, bring it back home. It's not about what you think you see outside of yourself. Practice forgiveness with each and every one here. This is the perfect place to do it. It'll make it easier when we leave this space, temporarily leave each other, go out to the world, to continue practicing it out in the world. This is what will save us according to the Course, is the practice of forgiveness or the practice of being willing to see beyond bodies, to see the truth, the content, not the vehicle, the content, not the form. The form is really nothing. And if you hear or see something that brings you joy and peace and happiness, and you're tempted to assign that to the body you see speaking or moving, bring it back home. It's you. What you're recognizing over there, seeing over there is actually in you. That's you as well, right? So we are indeed mirrors of each other and everything you think is in front of you is really a mirror of you. But the mirror is showing you either one of two things. There's only two possible things the mirror is showing you. What are the ways you view yourself? So being mirrored back is either the truth in you or the lie in you about you to yourself. And so that annoyance, that frustration with another, whatever, that's you seeing the lie about you projected over there. And the only thing to do with that is to bring it back home and ask for the truth about it. Because inside that lie, inside of it, is, is a truth that you can't see. Inside of it is the positive aspect of what you've twisted into this lie, right? So if you see laziness, well, that's a projection of your own judgment of laziness on self. So you can bring it home and say, please show me the truth. So it says, is it not evident that what the body's eyes perceive fills you with fear? Is that not evident? Perhaps you think you find a hope of satisfaction there 
perhaps you fancy to attain some peace and satisfaction in the world as you perceive it. Yet it must be evident the outcome does not change. Back to what we talked about. Seek but do not find. Right? It, no matter how much we chase it, even if we get it, whatever it is, the end, the outcome doesn't change. We are disappointed at some point or left flat at least or, you know, devastated because it didn't give us what we want and we didn't find it there. Right? Mm -hmm. This is very evident in the chasing of people or relationships, right? We all know the course talks about the three stages of all relationships, but so does Harville Hendrix. But the honeymoon stage is, you know, where you chase it, you think you found it, you projected all this greatness on this person, and that cannot last. That projection will fade. And so once it fades, six months, a year, two years at the most, usually, maybe you get three, but usually it's more close, it's closer to six months to a year, and, it's, and it wears off. And then what you see next is the original projection. The original projection we're projecting on everyone is all the stuff we don't like and that we think we see inside of ourselves. And we project that out there and we want to attack it out there. And then we grab one or two people and we say, except for them, we're going to project a better image on them. But we're projecting it on top of the old image. We do this with people, places, and things, not just human bodies, right? And so it will wear off. But, and then we think, oh my God, how did I make this mistake? How did I miss this? This person isn't wonderful and great. They're bad and terrible, and I need to get away from them. And we use that as an excuse to deny our brother, the Course says. And we discard them like an old used toy, and we go seeking the next toy, right? And so, and we do this with everything, not just with bodies, people's bodies, right? So, some things can gratify or can pleasure you for longer periods. Some things can get you so drunk on pleasure like an alcoholic or an addict, you can get lost in it for long periods of time, but it will do the same thing to you in your life that an addiction to any drug, you know, or substance will do, right? And you think you're so happy and life is so wonderful, but it's literally tearing you down to be in that. So, and eventually there's a bottoming out, which we talked about earlier, there's a crash and it's just become so painful and unsustainable that, you know, you reach for help in some way. Some people, however, especially when it comes to actual drugs or substances, your bottom is death. Yeah. Okay. So perhaps you fancy to attain some peace and satisfaction in the world as you perceive it. Yet it must be evident the outcome does not change. Despite your hopes and fancies, always does despair result. Despair. And there is no exception, nor will there ever be. Hello, wake up. There's no exception. You can't jump from one person to the next or from one person to a thing. Some people leave the relationship and get into a business or a career or they go traveling or they, you know, it's not going to work is what it's saying. There's no exception, nor will there ever be. You can't chase for things outside of you to make you okay. They doesn't work because there's nothing outside of you. What's not okay is inside what's not feeling okay is inside and it's, <clears throat> you cannot find the solution away from the problem the solution is where the problem is Thank you for joining us for today's quick video of the Course in Miracles Discovery Meeting. If you want to watch the full version and be able to jump into the live stream and participate, please click below and join the Miracle Makers community. We are here to make miracles together, to make miracles happen for you and for the greater community as a whole. So please click below, become a member of the Miracle Makers community. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.